Americans may have been first in flight, but a decade after Orville and Wilbur Wright's breakthrough on a sandy beach in North Carolina, aeronautics in the United States were significantly inferior to the progress being made across the Atlantic. Sped along by the outbreak of World War I in 1914, aviation advances in Europe included long-range dirigibles, all-purpose fighters, and reconnaissance planes. The Americans were desperately behind. So to play catch-up, secretary of the Smithsonian Institution, Charles D. Walcott, suggested the creation of an advisory committee dedicated to strengthening the country's flight technology. Among the biggest champions of Walcott's idea was a young Franklin D. Roosevelt, then Assistant Secretary of the Navy. The resolution was pushed through Congress and signed into law by President Woodrow Wilson on March 3rd, 1915. With an initial budget of $5,000, which wasn't much even in those days, and 12 unpaid members, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, or NACA, went to work. The organization started out counseling the government on matters like airmail service and patent licensing. But with the establishment of the Langley Memorial Aeronautic Laboratory in 1917, NACA set about pure research and development. One of their earliest accomplishments was the construction of the Variable Density Wind Tunnel, which let researchers simulate high-altitude flying for aircraft models. NACA would build several more wind tunnels throughout the 20s and 30s, leading to a string of improvements, like reduced drag engines and better wing designs. It was work that would prove to be particularly critical in the years leading up to World War II. With America still lagging behind their soon-to-be enemies, NACA turned much of their attention towards streamlining military aircraft, like the Navy's F-4F Wildcat, which flew 45 miles an hour faster when NACA was through with it. The P-51 Mustang, was also born of NACA engineering, as well as the turbo supercharged B-17 Flying Fortress, advances that helped speed the Allies to victory. And America's claim to the reputation it so sorely sought back in 1915. Air superiority. But NECA wouldn't stop there. It collaborated with the U.S. Army Air Force to explore supersonic flight, first achieved by Chuck Yeager in 1947 aboard a Bell X-1 rocket plane. In four short decades, NECA transformed U.S. aeronautics from a one-hit wonder into an industry leader on the edge of the Earth's atmosphere. That's where its successor, NASA, would take over and carry flight to places few could have imagined when aviation began, space. <laughs> 